Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Hello, I'm Bron Sage, Director of Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage. And today on the lamp bench, we have a pair of brass oil lamps that we're going to be bringing into the 21st century. Now these lamps are probably from the mid-1800s, maybe earlier, and very likely French. There's no real way of telling because the technology and the skills that make something like this is hundreds of years old and it's still in use today. Down here we have little dolphins holding it up, which is a very common motif. Goes up to this pierce work, which appears to have some kind of a fruit. I don't know what it might be, an apple or something like that, with these garlands. That's repeated on the top up here. And we take it apart, we can see the internal works of it which in this case, since the burner is gone, all we've got is the tank and the rest of the hardware that just holds the tank in place. And what we're going to have to do is find a way to first run a cord up through the bottom here. It's going to be visible. There's no way around that because these little dolphin guys are not hollow. and I wouldn't want to try and run a wire through them if they were. Another hole up into this bowl and then figure out some way to put this all together so that we can put a light socket on top of it. We're at the Packard Precision 12-speed drill press and I have made a little simple jig here to hold this thing in place because the nature of drill press means that one hand is going to be on the machine and if you're going to hold the uh, workpiece while you're drilling it, you've only got one hand. Complicate things, brass tends to grab the bit and hold on to it tight. So any kind of drilling work in brass, it's got an extra hazard to your hands. So it only takes a few minutes to make up a quick little fixture like this and get it in place. And then clamp it down. And that will save your fingertips and other body parts that you've grown fond to. Now, using a high-speed steel drill bit in brass, turning at 2450 RPM, which is as close as I can get to the recommended speed, which is right around there, and uh, we're ready to drill. Now drilling the second hole is going to call for a slight modification of our fixture, mainly these wedges here on the side, because we've got to drill a hole in a bowl. And when you're drilling a curved surface, you really need to come in pretty much at a good tangent to it. Uh, otherwise, your bit's just going to skitter all over the place. And it's going to be very difficult and probably break your bit as well at the same time. I just simply get it all lined up, get everything clamped in place, and we'll be ready to go. Now when you drill a hole in brass or any other kind of metal, you're going to end up with sharp corners, which is not good if you're going to be pushing a wire through it. I would like to be able to put a grommet here, but that's just not going to be practical, both for appearance sake and also because underneath here, I don't have a lot of clearance. And that shows up the advantage of having this nice jig here, which is going to hold it down. Well, I'll take a piece of beaded chain and pass it through the hole, smoothing it out. Now this beaded chain 
is actually steel. A lot of beaded chain that you can find is all brass. And that's not really what you want for this kind of a job. You just lower it down through here and just basically just go around it a couple times, pulling the chain through it, getting it nice and even. It takes all that sharp edge off of it and it won't cut the wire. Next, I've got to drill a hole in this little basket here that lines up right there. And I could just hog out a big hole and it'd be fine, but I prefer to get it as close and accurate as possible. And to do that, I've got just a little lump of modeling clay. Just press it down, get it all lined up where it's supposed to be. And that shows me exactly where to drill my hole. Now it goes without saying that you're going to keep something like this held down nice and tight when you're drilling it. But there's an added hazard when you're drilling through a piece of metal this thin, sheet metal. And that is that when the drill bit breaks through, this little corner right here is going to grab the sheet metal, curl it up, and it's going to try to climb up this drill bit. And no matter how tight you're holding it in your hand, it's going to come loose. It's going to start spinning. And uh, if you try to hold it down, you're going to lose things that you probably were planning on using later. Now, thanks to a YouTuber in Australia named Mark Pressling, I owe a great deal of gratitude for, because he showed a way to uh, drill through sheet metal with reducing that hazard quite a, great, a good deal. Not really sure why it works, but I've tried it before and it does. And it's simply that we take a piece of ordinary cloth, hold it down right there. It's folded four times. I'm going to turn on the machine and I'm going to drill right through this with very little trouble. Now, I could have ruined one showing you how bad it would be if I didn't have the cloth on there. But take my word for it, that's really nice. Now the process of converting an oil lamp into an electric lamp means adding electric lamp hardware. And this usually starts with this stuff, which is commonly known as lamp pipe. The actual technical term is 1 8 inch iron pipe, which is kind of weird because there's nothing on here that's 1 8 inch, and it's not made of iron, it's made of steel. But what this does is, is it goes back to the days of gas lamps is the gas came into the house and pipes about so big and by the time it got down to the individual burners it was this big and this size thread was the smallest pipe in the house which ran to the gas lights now as uh, electrical lights became more and more common they kept using the old hardware and the fittings for the gas lights to run the wires whenever they could and so now the inside diameter is much larger and one eighth inch but this is a basically a fossil of the industrial revolution it's the only place left where one eighth inch iron pipe threads are still used you take any lamp apart made anywhere in the last hundred years or more up to today you're going you're likely to find these threads now in order to put this pipe into this lamp the hole in the bottom here was a little smaller than it is now because it had this screw and this little finial on the bottom of it. I'll have to deal with that finial a little bit later. But I've got to make threads here so that this pipe can be mounted in the bottom of the bowl just like this. I'm going to cut threads in the bowl with a 1 8 inch IP iron pipe tap. And since it's a little short, I'm going to have to put this extension on it which uh, is not made for this purpose, but it, it will serve. So I'll have to put a little tape on it, keep it from falling off. A little wrench made especially for turning taps. Brass is fairly soft, so it won't take just a few quick turns, and we'll cut threads 
into that hole. You can buy the lamp pipe in practically any length, but uh, I buy it in bulk in three foot pieces because the shipping is cheaper. And of course that brings up the problem of how do you cut this stuff? It's fairly soft steel and the good hacksaw blade will cut right through it. The problem comes up with how do you hold it to cut it? You can't clamp it in a vise. That just won't work. It's going to crush it and uh, make it unusable. You could use soft pads in the vice jaws, but again, in order to clamp it tight enough to where it's actually going to hold it so that you can work on it, you might end up crushing it even with the soft jaws. My solution to the problem is to take one of these brass couplers. This is probably the thickest one they make. It's got the 1 8 inch pipe threads on the inside. I file two flat spots on it, and then I saw it in half. And it goes on it just like that. And I can clamp it down as tight as the vise will go, and I could do anything I need to this piece of pipe, cut it, grind it, even drill a hole in it if I had to. I find the best way to mark the pipe is just simply put a piece of uh, masking tape on it. And you want to be careful to remember which side of the tape you're supposed to cut on. But start to cut by pulling backwards, holding the uh, saw up nice and straight. And once you've got a good groove in there, you just keep pushing forward and back and forth until you get it cut through. Now, a hacksaw cut is pretty ragged, lots of sharp edges and uh, splinters, which we can't have in a lamp, so that calls for some file work. Got this big flat file clamped in the vise. The first thing I do is hold the pipe up vertical and just pull it back a couple times until it's flat all the way across. Now, I lean it down at a 45 degree angle and turn it while I'm pulling backwards. And what that's going to do gives me a nice bevel so that uh, the threads are clear and it'll go into whatever I got to screw it into. Then, give a little bit of a scrape on the corner of the chisel to knock any chips off and take this fine round file and clean out the inside and that gives me a nice smooth pipe that uh, I can pull the wire through without worrying about uh, catching it, cutting it, or scraping it. When you're running wires through something that was never intended to be an electric light, you have to be very careful all the points where the wire is going to contact something hard. This hole here, I have rounded this off as much as I possibly can, eliminate all the sharp edges. And then on top of it, I've got this piece, which is an even thinner piece of metal. And again, I've deburred it, got it nice and smooth to my finger. If it can't cut my finger, I guess it can't cut a wire as well. But when I put this together for the final time, I'm going to run a bead of silicone underneath here so that when it seats down in this bowl, that'll be one extra little piece to keep it in place and resist turning. Now this is what it takes to convert an oil lamp into an electric lamp. It starts down at the bottom with this piece of hardware called a hickey. No one knows why, but in electrical hardware, any kind of bracket that holds two pieces apart from each other is called a hickey. 
I've got a little short piece of pipe here in the bottom and that's going to screw into the threads that we cut in the bowl. Plus this also makes a very easy way to reinstall that little uh, finial that uh, no longer fits because we've drilled the hole out. Now one important point about using a hickey is that there always needs to be a lock nut on the inside to ensure that this pipe can't uh, start turning in the hickey when you're in putting stuff together because it would just simply go down and slice the wire off. And to prevent that from happening, I always use some of the blue thread lock. Tighten it down and when it cures, it will keep that nut in place through normal use. You can still break it loose with a wrench if you had to. They do make a red thread sealer, which you have to get it hot with a torch if you want to take it loose. Now I've got my wire through. I've got to be very careful how I put this together because all of these parts can be put together a number of different ways. Only one of them works. To start the assembly, I'm going to put the hickey in by itself because that will make it much easier to uh, run the wire. Pull the wire up through here, then I have the pipe, put the nut on it, which will serve to lock it onto the hickey once it's tightened down. Okay, and thanks to that blue Loctite, don't have to get this any tighter than that. It, when that Loctite sets up, this will be very nice and strong. I'm going to put a little bit of silicone in a few spots around here because in the final assembly, this top shell is not going to be clamped down tight. It was originally meant to be loose. Now this is a piece called a base cap. And it's made for jobs like this where you want to put a cap on top of a large hole. They're available like this with a little dome and also flat like a regular check ring. And I'm putting a knurled nut on here. I want everything on the top because it's basically bad practice to squeeze everything between the top and the very bottom especially when you've got this much lightweight sheet metal and brass which is likely just to bend and then uh, you're going to have a loose and wobbly lamp now the saddle another knurled nut We're ready to put the socket on. Now it's time for the sermon that I give in 
every lighting video, one version of it or another. This is the regular version. What it starts off with saying how wiring sold as lamp cord with the two strands inside the insulation like this and stuck together. It's got various different names, sometimes called Siamese cord, sometimes called duplex cord, and sometimes just called lamp cord. One side of it is smooth and the other side has ridges. You can feel them with your finger. And what you do is you tie a little knot right here in it. This is called the underwriter's knot. And its purpose is to prevent the cord from being yanked. If someone kicks the uh, lamp cord walking across the floor, and as a result, yank the uh, wires out from underneath the screws. And of course, you've got two live wires inside of a steel pipe, and somebody bends down to pick it up, and they get shocked, or, or worse. Also, the significance of the ridges in the smooth wire is that the ridge wire goes on the silver-colored screw. The smooth wire goes on the brass-colored screw. And the reason for that is the brass-colored screw goes to the center terminal and the switch. And so... If you happen to reach up into a lamp in the dark and there's no light bulb in it, if it's wired correctly with the ridge wires going to the silver screw, which connects to the shell, you won't get shocked if you stick your finger up there. You'd actually have to go all the way in and touch the center terminal and the light switch be turned on at the same time in order to shock to get shocked. Now, how often that becomes a real problem, I don't know. In Europe and other places, they have come up with all kinds of complicated switches which disconnect the power completely if the uh, bulb is removed. But in the United States, that's pretty much the way we figured out how to do it. Pretty simple and seems to be effective. Now I can pull this wire down. shell on it. I prefer these kinds of uh, sockets with the ring on them because they're much stronger than the type where they just snap together. This is Bronze Age for the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, and thank you for sitting all the way through this video with me. I would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe, and uh, try to put out a video about once a week on lamp repair, furniture repair, something like that, yeah, like that going on in the lab, and uh, I certainly hope to see you again next week. Again, thank you for watching.